wasn't somebody's uh, a way of doing it. The Spirit directed the early church. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. They learned the secret of following the Spirit. Oh, yes. They learned how to walk with the Spirit. They learned how to move with the Spirit. They learned to let the Spirit lead them. They learned to let the Spirit guide them. They learned that, that they couldn't direct the church. They learned they couldn't feed a church. They learned they couldn't have all the answers. That's but it. the Holy Spirit knew, for we know not what we ought to pray for, but we have something within us that, yeah. that, 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 that is powerful enough yeah. that with groanings that cannot be uttered knows exactly what everybody needs here today. Amen. 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 I've got something that knows exactly. Ooh, yeah. And really, when you stop and think about it, this early church was so powerful that from the very first chapter along, they had the vacancy, didn't they? Judas, he hung himself, hit the ground in his bow, uh, bowels, the Bible said, the innermost being gushed out. Yes. And there was a vacancy. They couldn't go to the upper room of 11. They couldn't go to the upper room of 12. They had to, uh, well, that is 13, they had to have 12. Yes. And when they got together, they began to see early uh, in the book of Acts, the first chapter, and uh, they said, Lord, show them to us. There was Matthias and... And there was a couple others, I can't remember now just who they were. Justice. Uh, justice, and, and they said, Lord, show unto us which one of these two men. Now, uh, the, the, the uh, commentaries in the religious world will tell you they drew straws. Uh, they'll tell you that they voted. They'll tell you that it was politics right, right. and they voted. But, but the Bible said, but the Lord moved upon them yes. and they cast their lots according to the Spirit of God, which was in them. Yeah. Now, I don't know what happened, but I'll demonstrate it this way. They had the two names in front of them. They began to pray. Something began to move them. Something began to shake them. And they said, Matthias. And every one of them, the Holy Spirit said, Matthias. That's right. Now, that's how, that's how it happened. And then in chapter, in chapter 13, the Holy Spirit shows up, and they begin to try to find out who was what, and they didn't have all of the gifts there. They had some of the gifts there. But the Holy Ghost said unto them, Separate unto me for Paul and, Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have for them to do. Yep. And then you get to the 20th chapter, and Paul is guided by and moved by this same Spirit. The Spirit of God that, uh, the Spirit of God uh, in this case drew him. In other cases, the Bible said it forbidden him. So there was a restraining influence on some occasions yeah. while God on other occasions caused him to move forward. Yeah. How many know God can tell you when to stop and back up just as much as he can tell you to go forward? Yes, now don't get quiet on me. I'm still trying, still trying to get uh, to where I am. Thank you for your love. I appreciate all of you very much. Yes. Now look at verse, look at chapter 20 now. Let me get to this. Because there's one thing I want you to know. He wants you to start building on the foundation. I'm going to slow down and give you two verses, and I'll be out of the way. In verse 22, he's bound by the Spirit. He goes to Jerusalem. And when he gets there, he said that he wanted to know the things that befall me. And say that by the Holy Ghost, witness in every city, saying, Bonds and afflictions abide me. Now let's go to verse 27 to save time. He said, For I am not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said, For take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and unto all the flock of God over which the Holy Ghost, everybody circle the word Holy Ghost, see the Holy Ghost still working with this church. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take, take heed over all the flock and uh, to over all the church which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers, which he had purchased in somebody else's blood. His own. No. Oh, I'm sorry. It says his own blood. His own blood. It says that the church was purchased by his blood. His blood. Aren't you glad his blood's over your life? Oh, yes. Amen. Born by his blood. Oh, yes. And then he says to these brethren here, gathered at the beach of Miletus here, the elders, he said... For I know this, he said, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, and also of your own selves shall men arise and speak perverse things and draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch, everybody say watch. 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 We better be watching. Yep. Right. Uh -huh. uh, we, we had better watch every crevice. Yes. Parents, 
Watch every crevice. I'm, I'm finding out. We're raising our grandson. I might just, I might just put this in. I'm finding out that a, even a seven-year-old can navigate on, on that computer like you drive your car through a city. And you say, I built blocks, I built this, I put that. That mind is so intelligent. My grandson sitting that's back there where Brother Larry is last week, and, and my daughter-in-law gave uh, him his phone. She had built in there passwords, passcodes, fences, and I don't know what all. I'm not a computer guy. But she had that. Did you know in five minutes he went around every one of those things and was on the Internet looking at something he wanted to see right here, Mr. The devil is out to destroy us. Yes. 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 And when we're using the internet, let's use it for God's glory. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen? If we can't use it for God's glory, then we got a problem and God help us. Now, please don't get angry with me for saying that. I'm watching what happens with my grandson. How many believe you ought to contend for the faith that we want delivered to the saints? Oh, watch. watch. He said watch. watch. And uh, now here is a verse I've never preached on in my life. I've been preaching a long time. Had maybe too long. I don't know. But this verse right here is one I've never preached on, but notice it on this subject of foundation. And, and now, brother, and he said, I commend you to God. Verse 32. Is everybody there at 32? Amen. He said, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to do what? Build. Build you up. See, we're, we're to build on this foundation. There, there, there's another line here uh, that needs a little work, and I won't work on it except for just a second. And I give and, and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. Now, that inheritance has been given to you, purchased for you, without struggle on your part, without monetary gain on your part, but it was purchased by Christ. Yes. Yes. That inheritance yes. is yours if you will obtain the inheritance. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you don't become like Esau and sell everything you had for a bowl of beans. That inheritance belongs to you. It was yes. built there by Jesus Christ yes. and handed to you. Yes, amen. Oh, yes, it was. Uh -huh. And there's a long line, I personally believe, without crossing anybody, and I don't want to cross anybody. That's not my point. I personally believe that there is a line of saints that is in this earth, that's been in this earth, and two different categories, brother, for your consideration. In Ephesians 1 and verse 4, the Bible talks about there was a group of people, and I believe some of them are here today, that's called before the foundation of the world. Absolutely. Yes. That means before anything was ever formed. Amen. God said to Job, 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 he said to Job, he said, where were you before when I laid the foundation of the earth? What was that? That was Jesus Christ, the one I'm preaching about, the one uh, that I'm laboring on now, the one that uh, built the church, the one that's the Alpha and Omega, the one that is the beginning and the end, the one in which the church is built on. He said, where were you when I laid him as a foundation in the earth? Where were you? He said, where were you when, when I hung this, this globe on nothing? He said, where were you? He said, where were you when, when I stretched the heavens out? Where were you, Job? Uh, he had to say, well, I, I don't know. I wasn't here yet. I'm telling you that God is way ahead of every one of us. That God is sovereign, that he is mighty, and that he is in control of everything in this universe. He's in control of Obama and everybody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, where were you when I did all of this? I ask you something. Is your little puny problems so great to a God that says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool? He said, while the nations are dropping the bucket. He said, I sit upon the circle of the earth and behold, the inhabitants thereof as grasshoppers. Yep. What a God. You think, and it's, it's not difficult to talk about a God like this. 
Now, if I had a little stone God, I'd be in trouble here. If I had a little wood God, if I had a little snapshot of Jesus in my wallet, if I had to cross myself 40 times and count the beads, I'd be in trouble. And I'm talking about a God that formed the whore. I'm talking about a God that knows me. I'm talking about a God that knows you. I'm talking about a God that's now, then, now, and is to come. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm talking about a God that said, where were you when I made all of this? Awesome. He's powerful. He's mighty. He built something in our hearts. And there's a line. There's one now. There's one. And you can disagree. This is not some big do doctor. And I'm not up here uh, putting something out that's so way out. Just listen to me. Hear me out a minute. There, there's a line that's before the foundation of the earth. Yes, sir. He said they was. They were called before. They were called. They were chosen in eternity and called in time. And there's another number here that began to bother me a number of years ago in Luke chapter 11. And I read this. I uh, was always kind of a little bit bothered by it. And um, I don't think God, uh, and I don't think the translators, I had a brother tell me, well, the translators use the wrong word. I don't believe that. I believe the word is immutable. It's infallible. I don't think you can add to it. I don't think you can take away from it. I believe that there's a word in that Bible God intended for that word to be put in your King James Version of your Bible. Amen. Is everybody getting tired? Should I sit down? Am I, am I working too much? No. Okay. Here's, here's something I saw a number of years ago. And I began to get this when Brother Marlowe began to advance to this church because I first came here things were it looked to me like I cannot never did understand without going way out on a doctrinal limb that there had to be more that God was interested in than just 144,000 and that's it and I couldn't I thought well that just does not make sense to me and it, it didn't make sense to our pastor how many know he's a very studious man and I am delighted to be under him. Amen. I want you to know that everything I have in my life, I owe it to this wonderful man of God. I say that. I say it in front of the camera. I say it wherever I go. I say I'm thankful for what's been put in my heart. He began to talk to us a number of years ago. He began to try to help us with 30, 60, and 100 fold. He began to show us that, that the 60-fold were overcomers just as much as the 100-fold was. Yeah. And he used all kind of scriptures, and, and he studied and, and put it together. And, and I didn't buy it because he said it. I bought it because I looked at it. And I could see, according to Daniel 7, I could see, according to Revelation chapter 5, yeah. that there was two groups, <laughs> some that ministered, some that ministered unto the Lord and another group that stood before him. Yes. And that out of all of the gathering that was put together, according to Daniel 7, a fiery stream went forth. Yes. And there were thousands times thousands that stood before him yes. and 10,000 that is that ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 that stood before him. Yes. So there's two separate Places there where, he, where the scripture expands that. The Bible talks again in the book of Song of Solomon about two armies, right? Yes. And then you've got to consider Rachel when you consider that is not, is not, not Rachel, but you've got to consider Abigail. And, and when David, of course, her nasty husband, after he beat him back, he tried to be good to him. After, I can't think of the, the old... Uh, possum's name right now is a grumpy old guy and, and all David wanted was was to just get something for his men they've been in battle and he refused to bring anything out to them was his name neighbor neighbor what a name uh, so and and so then then the dear wife like, like a lot of good wives 
we'd all be in trouble. I told them over there Thursday night, I don't want to go to a church that just has men in it. No, oh, sir. Oh. Can I have an amen? Yes. 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 That'd be a terrible church to be in. Oh, yes. You got to get through their spirit, their ego, their haughtiness, their high-mindedness, and all the other baggage that goes with it. Yeah, amen. I'm glad for a sister that'll worship God. Oh, yeah. I'm glad for a tenderness. I'm glad I look out over the crowd and I see the sisters reaching out for God. I see somebody wanting to touch the heart of God. Did you know God is looking for a heart that'll say thank you? He's looking for a little woman. For a little woman that'll say thank you to the Lord. And it might blow your mind to know that I'm part of the bride. Well, sure. I'm, I'm of the feminine gender. Now, don't take that out on the YouTube and just point that out and show that to everybody. But the Bible calls us a bride. He's looking for a bride. Hallelujah. He's going to have a bride. He's going to have a woman without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. And she is to present herself before this great king that's coming. Glory to God. He's going to have a bride. He has a bride in formation here today. There's a bride on the earth. She's not a caked on. She's not an old hag with a wig on and eyelashes that long and all of the other. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> She's not the one that's in the book of Revelation sitting on a scarlet color base. No, sir. But she's a woman that's made herself ready. Hallelujah. She's a woman that's pure and holy and has been sanctified, has been separated and redeemed for God's purpose. And she's ready to receive the bridegroom at any time. Blessed be his wonderful name. Don't you want to be in the bride of Jesus Christ? Hey. And of course, Abigail is a wonderful picture of that. I'm going to leave that alone. She brought, she had two groups. She had to, she had women that came with her. Study that type. Tell me what you think about it. And then in Luke chapter 11 now, there's another line here that, um, that I think gives us hope. I think that there's a lot of people that have come to God. What about the Baptists? Uh, what about the good old Methodists? How, how about the Episcopalians? How about, how about somebody that loves God that outwork us and and have just as much experience with God. Now, don't get quiet on me. How, how about people that love God that's never met us and we've never met them and they've got God in their life? What about them? What about my Methodist mother? What about my Methodist grandmother? What about my grandfather that was in the church of God that built 18 churches and believed in holiness and never heard the bride message? What about it? What about a lot of people? How many can relate to that? How about a lot of people? know God and have an experience with yes. God. Yes. Yes. You're going to leave them out of the Bible? Are they in the Bible? <laughs> you notice here in Luke chapter 11 and verse 49, I said in uh, Ephesians 1 and 4, it said before the foundation of the earth. In Luke 11 here, in verse 49, he said, Therefore, saith the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles and some of them shall slay and persecute. And that the blood of the prophets which was shed before the foundation, before, or that is from the foundation of the world, the blood of them that was shed from the foundation, not before, but from the foundation of the earth. So, what is that? And you go here, and I won't take the time, you'll see that the foundation of the earth, from the foundation of the earth, began with Abel's altar. Yeah. It began with Abel's altar. Yes. So there's a group that's saved before the foundation of the world that obviously is the bride of Jesus Christ. God, and then there's countless numbers and, and numbers of people. And who can number them? 
And when John said, and there was such a number, he said, and he said, and he asked the angel, said, who are these? He said, why, these are they that came out of great tribulation and have watched their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Who were these people? They were from the foundation, the beginning with Abel's altar and this righteous line and these people that, uh, that was just as holy and just as sure as any other group in the earth. And they came from that righteous sacrifice. There's a lot of people that's made the right sacrifice. They didn't go get something from a vegetable garden without any blood in it. But they were saved under the influence of the blood. And just like Abel, their blood is a cry up from the ground. Blessed be his wonderful name. Amen. I'm through. Praise his wonderful name. So write these down, and I won't get on them too late now, but write these down. Jude, Jude is only one, there's only one chapter in the book of Jude. Jude 1 and verse 20, and write this one down, um, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9, and you'll see that God wants a people that'll build, Sister Willie, the right foundation, that'll labor and build on that right foundation. Aren't you glad to be here today? Yes. How many will give him a wave offering yes. with me right now? Yes. And just thank you. Just put your hands up and thank him for his wonderful mercy and his wonderful grace and for what he's given us. Are you glad to be in church today? Oh, yes. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Oh, yes. Appreciate everybody coming out and supporting the the church and how many will continue to pray for Brother Marlow that God will yes. use him yes. in Anna, Illinois. Yes. And um, I can tell you this, brother, and he's building on the foundation oh, here. Yes. Yes. He's putting a foundation in that city. Yes. He's putting a foundation in the Cadillac church. And he's putting it wherever he goes. You have something? Yeah. You, just, um, you said you were going to give us two things about the foundations. Number one, two. one was set, it's set but I didn't get two. Two is that, that it's laid with steel. They always That's put steel okay, in that foundation. Any other, any other thought? All right. I would like for the brethren, if they would, uh, to assemble. We want to come to you uh, today to help us with our expenses in the church. And uh, you can get your checkbooks out if you would. And begin to, begin to start writing and, and uh, start uh, uh, helping us. We urge you to support us. And... Um, we have a man by the name of Carl Carl Marshall. Is he here? Put your hand up, Carl, Carl Marshall. Brother Marshall, we're glad to have you. God bless you. And then there's, and if I get this wrong, Brother Paul, just help me with it. I think it says Paul Tamburello. Is that right? Tamburello. Brother Paul Tamarello, we welcome you, friend of Tracy. Tracy. Praise the Lord. I've only known her my whole life. So. Anyway, we're glad you're here. Appreciate you being here. There's a great feeling in the church today. Can you feel it, everybody? And if I don't know if Sister Marlowe has a song or the band has a number. But let's all worship God. I want to. I want to make an announcement real quick. Stand up back there, Sister Valerie. Just get it. I know it's going to embarrass you, but it's good for you. Uh, when, uh, when is the, when is this play you're putting on? Give us the details of it. December sixth. December sixth at seven o'clock, and the doors open at six thirty. Okay, it's TCS, TCS presents a biblical yep. Christmas. They're doing awesome. They're excited. and they're doing good. It's going to be a great, great play. We ask all of you to just. Come and be a part of it Friday, December 6th at 7 p.m. Tickets will be sold that day. They're going to sell them that day. The, the, the TCS students and staff are selling them before the play, but you can buy them that night, too. Okay, so the tickets will be uh, $5 adults and $3 student. And then for one more time, Brother Steve, put up the, what we had last night just to remind everybody that uh, Thanksgiving dinner is coming out. If, you have, if you've not been asked to cook, uh, a turkey, then you can help by by going through that list. By the way, that's posted uh, in the foyer back here. 
if you'll look at that, there's a posted thing out there that says all that uh, that's on there. Some of the printing, I can't see it. But all of that's there. Pick it all up. Get it all in here plus extra, and, and God will be good to us. All right, let's receive an offering, and everybody get in. Make this a wonderful day, and may God bless all of you. Amen. Appreciate it.